What's up, Simonics? Welcome back to the second part of our mini series on Ionic image upload with Nest.js and Capacitor. To get started with our application, you have to make sure that you get the code from the first section, which includes the Nest API to upload our images. And once you get this, we can focus on our Ionic app. So we will build an application to upload files, images from the library, um, both within the browser and on a device. And well, let's do this. I've already started the Ionic application, so I created a new app, blank layout, Angular and Capacitor enabled. And because we're going to I use the camera on the browser as well, you should install the Ionic Progressive Web App, uh, Progressive Web App Elements package as well. Once you get this, also generate a service which we'll use to communicate with the API and then uh, run your first Ionic build because you can only add capacitor native projects after this first initial build. So these are the initial steps. In order to use the uh, package we just installed, you also have to add this little snippet to your main TS which defines the custom elements and adds them basically to your window object. Also, I did a quick addition to the app module already. Uh, the HTTP client module goes to the array of imports just like usual if you want to make any sort of HTTP request. With all of that in place, um, we will focus now first of all on the API service. Again, make sure you get the code from the first uh, lesson. It will be below the video as usual and make sure that it is running. One quick addition. If you're using uh, the Ionic application now within the browser, we can communicate with localhost no problem. But once you start to deploy your application to a device, you can't use localhost anymore. For that, I use a simple service called ngrock. Uh, you can install it, I think, for both Windows, iOS, Linux, everywhere. And once you do this, you can run ngrock HTTP 3000 and then you get a forwarding that you can now use in your application instead of the regular URL. So once we're going to test this on a device, which we can actually also do at the same time since I'm running with live reload on an external device. Um, just showing you quickly the command. Um, the command is, where is it? Ionic capacitor run iOS or Android dash dash live reload dash dash external. Then either Android Studio or Xcode will come up and you can debug your application right here on the device. <clears throat> okay, enough of the talk. Let's get into our upload service. So I already defined the interface, which is basically uh, the same like we had in our uh, um, Nest.js API. And we can then Go ahead with the usual stuff, the HTTP, HTTP client, and make sure it's from, yeah, from the right package. Now we need a few functions and I will bring in a few of them because we have quite a lot of code and not all of them are super interesting. So get images first of all makes a get request. Um, we specify that we get back an array. This is important for TypeScript as well uh, since usually uh, the result is handled as an object. And by doing this we're already telling okay this will be an array of images. URL just like we had it in the first lesson. Um, the delete image is as well pretty easy. Make a delete request to image slash ID. Again, make sure of the string laterals. And here I got a lot of questions about this over and over again because people were using the regular quotes. And if you're using it like this, um, none of these values will be calculated to the real values. So you really see this uh, if you're using a decent IDE that it automatically is changed now. All right. Um, this is the first part. Now for the upload image, um, maybe we'll do this in a second. And we will actually also have a second function that we will call upload image file because there's a tiny difference between uploading files from the web or running a capacitor or ioning on the web or on a device. But we will get to this in a second. Let's start with the home page and just like with the API servers, I can bring in no I can't bring in because we need the service of course um, so we need the API service and 
what do we need as well? Um, we might need the platform since we uh, need to check if we're running on iOS or Android. And we also need the action sheet controller to bring up some um, elements or to bring up this little action sheet in which we can select a camera or phone library. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't care if it's never read yet. Anyway, uh, let's start with load images. We can actually already implement load images since uh, we can call our API, get images, subscribe images, because we got the typing. We also know that this is now an array of API images, and therefore we can also have a local variable um, API image uh, array, and this will be initially empty. And in here, we set images to images. Let's also log it out. Um, this dot images, and that's it. Make sure to call load images, something I really like to forget. So I create this function and don't call it and wonder where all my stuff is going. And I don't know why you complain about this, but not anything else. So now it works. Um, we should actually be able to get a little result here. I don't know. Okay, it was kind of out of sync, but there's also something you need to change on the API and that is to enable course in the main TS of your Nest.js application. It's really as easy as this if you get any course issues and then you should be finally able to see your images right here. So let's try to display them first of all and then we will focus on the upload. Uh, we can close this and this as well. Now I will bring in a um, bit of code because we want to focus on the upload and displaying is not really the, the key aspect in here. So we iterate over all the images using ion row and column, um, which means we will have two images next to each other. You could also define your responsive layout, of course, no problem. Then we can use the image name, the created ad, and simply the URL. So that's really the reason why we have this transformation in the back end to make it as easy as possible for the front end to just display the image from the list. Now for each of the um, images, I'll also add a little fab button at the end, uh, which can call delete image. So we have a little trash icon then hopefully, what was that? <laughs> Um, we have a little trash icon, hopefully, at the end of every image. Let's see. And there we go. I don't know what this image is, but here's an image. Yeah, okay, the rows and the columns, the height is different. Um, we could change this, but let's keep it like it is. And we got this nice button here to delete any of these images. Uh, actually, deleting the image is kind of easy, so let's simply do this. Um, as we can see from the home, we pass the image and the index. Um, so we got the image, API image still, and also the index. And then we can call um, the API to delete the image. And I also pass the index simply because we can then also splice our local array and we don't need to call load images again, taking a little bit of load from the server. Let's try this out and remove perhaps one of these images. And there we go. We spliced it and if I reload it, it is hopefully still gone. Yes, we only get back two images. Okay, I think we are ready for uh, adding a bit of upload to our application. For this, I will also add a new fab button now uh, below all the row layout that we had before. And if I was too fast with this, please, once again, check out the link to the tutorial right below the video. Now, this button is just one button at the end fixed. Um, and I will talk about this in a second. So this button will simply select a, a trigger a function to select the source because we can either uh, capture an image, load from the photo library, or on the web browser, uh, we could also load a local image file right there. And to do all of this, let's create our function to select the image source. The first buttons um, will be presented all the time. And these are take a photo or chose from, uh, from photos, photo, chose, maybe one photo too much. 
the camera source can now be imported from Capacitor Core. And we can also import the camera by saying camera from, no, not from um, plugins. We're basically just structuring the plugins object and extracting only the cam camera for now. There we go. Now we got the typing in place. Um, the add image function will then finally handle uh, capturing the image and presenting the source. Uh, this should be the source of the type camera source. Now, as I said, um, if we are not on a hybrid platform, which means we are on the web, we can also push another button to choose a file. And this is why I had this little snippet in here that I commented us initially. This is a hidden input, hidden through um, a file input, so we can use it with ViewChild. It only accepts files and especially only images. And once the input is changed, we can call the upload file. This is a little trick, um, simply to, um, because we don't wanna display the file input element. Um, I'm a bit fast today, so really sorry about that. View child file input, and of course, um, static faults, and we will just call it file input type element reference. There we go. So now um, we have another button in our action sheet, and on click, we will basically mimic the behavior that you usually see when you click on a file input. So file input connected to this hidden field and on change of this field, we will call our upload file. That is something we still need to figure out. But for now, we can um, display our action sheet using the action sheet controller and passing in the buttons as an array. So we've just constructed this buttons array dynamically in order to um, checking if we're on the web or not. Let's see, we got this button here. We can take photo, choose from photos, choose a file, and choose a file will actually immediately open this view. Uh, on a device, if you can see this, um, there's no only take photo and choose from photos. So working exactly as we want and live reload everywhere. So I really, uh, I really love this um, part about Capacitor. I never got this really working with Cordova and of course I couldn't work in the browser, but now it really works great. Um, maybe we can focus on the upload file first of all. Um, the event that you get, you can make it easy by saying event any, or you can go the hard way, which is event target, and then making a little transformation. <laughs> this now looks kind of scary, right? Um, we just want to get the file and we can now get it with uh, some safety in here. So now we could get target.files at the position zero because we only got one file. Um, we could have done this more easily. I think we could just call event.target.files at position zero if we made this like any, um, do whatever you want to do. Now with this file, uh, we now want to go to our API. Let's also lock this out so we see what the file actually looks like. And perhaps I will already do this. Uh, let's try. Uh, pick a file. Let's go in here. This is how the file looks like. Uh, we see the file has modified name, size, type, all information that we uh, might need in our service to upload the image file. And we will do this now in here. Um, we will actually pass simply the file to this um, uh, to this function and also a name that we can use um, because we implemented on the upload that we can have something in the body. I just wanted to show you uh, how you could have additional parameters in here as well. Uh, in order to upload the file with the right name and extension, um, actually, we could perhaps just use this name. Could work, could work. So let's try it with that. Um, we need to create a new form data element. 
object form data and make sure import is from um, no import needed okay anyway <laughs> um, to this form data we can now append all the fields that we got so we want to append the file as file and we can now give it a name as well so file name um, actually I think we could now use file.name makes life a bit easier as well to our form data we are going to append another name and this is now what the API uses uh, inside the image controller so once we create a new file with the body uh, the name is now inside the body and will be used for our database uh, name let's use name I actually don't know why I created it like this um, I really because the name is basically the file name as well so let's just skip the name and make it a bit easier for all of us and now um, with this form data we can make a standard HTTP recall uh, request this dot HTTP um, post because we're posting it to the server and now again make sure that you use the right backticks in here so we can use this dot URL slash image and as the body we're gonna pass our form data and that's everything we need to upload the file from our front end to the API in here we can now just go ahead and use the API dot upload image file I know that I only need one thing now and subscribe and what we get back should actually be a new image of the type API image once again so again uh, making use of the interface that we created because then we can use our images and simply push the new image nobody will complain the images array is of the type api image array and this is a new api image um, so log after upload new image and then we're good to go to upload files from here so let's try upload choose a file um, i will just upload this once again there we go after upload created name url id and if I refresh it is still there because it's in the database the server everything works fine now pretty cool for the web already and kind of easy to implement um, I don't know why I got spaces and everything in here all over the place really really annoying now add image is a bit more complicated but still not that much um, first of all we will use the camera so we can also import everything that we need from either capacitor core or from the plugins and then the idea is that we're using the source that we picked from the action sheet so photo or library i put the quality bit down um, to make the upload faster and we now got this image here uh, let's see image and I actually didn't want to use base64 initially I wanted to use the file URI but then we had to convert it still on the device on the web it was a bit different and actually it was easier to simply get back a base64 string and then uh, convert this string using a function that I found on stack overflow to um, a blob element so let's see if we use take photo it should bring up hopefully my other media track okay uh, and then we see we got back the base 64 string now with this function that I found uh, we can easily convert this string uh, from the image so the base 64 string to the blob data element that we can then more easily upload um, we or I didn't add a specific uh, name input field so um, again it was just to show you how you could supply additional parameters to your backend and now this blob data and actually this works now on the browser and device as well uh, the blob data can be used in the API service the upload is kind of like this only a bit different so for upload image uh, we got the blob data 
And the only problem is with blob data that we don't really have any information about the file name. Um, we have the format, but not even the MIME type. So it's a bit different now, um, but no problem. We use the blob data. Um, we use the name and we pass an extension. And for the name, we use the name. And for the file name, now we need to come up with a random name. Um, so let me just name this my image dot extension because the extension is actually in the uh, result um, from our camera, but the rest is not. So API upload image. Now we can pass in all the things we prepared, the blob data, the image name, and the extension should be in image dot uh, format. That was the value. And then once again, uh, after upload, we can actually perform the same steps like we did with the file upload. So we subscribe to the result. Um, after capture new image, because this is now really the same. The only difference is that for uh, capturing, we use base64, transform it to a blob, and then upload this blob data with whatever name instead of using the file directly. Really, not, not a lot of changes, um, only a small portion of this has really changed. Let's see. Uh, take a photo once again. Yeah, perfect photo. Actually, Ionic looks pretty good in this image. And there we go, give me a name, capture it, and take another one, just for reference. There we go. Now, I also got this on my device, so let's try to take a photo and to make sure it is this, I will capture my screen, use it, and then, uh, yeah, and then it can't work yet because I haven't changed the URL here, so let's change this to the ng-rock URL because I now want to test on the device and after changing it to the ng-rock URL, I now also got the results on my iPhone. Let's also take a photo. Uh, there we go. Use it. And then I got the picture on my device and now I also got the picture right here that I just took. So it's a little kind of inception of images. Okay. As a quick recap, we've built the Nest API in the first part. Definitely check it out if you haven't yet. And in the second part, we made Capacitor work with our API. It's not that hard to use form data to uh, pass files to your server, to pass additional information to the server. You just have to make sure that you check out the result that you get. So result from a file input uh, on the web is different than the result from the Capacitor camera plugin. Um, you need to make sure that the base64 is fine for you. Otherwise, you could also use the file URI from the capacitor plugin. And then you might have to write the file to the storage first and read it as blob data. So a bit complicated. But in general, we got it working. We got a live reload on the browser connected to the API now with ng-rock. We got the live uh, preview here on my device um, as well, which refreshed all the time as well. So really a perfect setup to build your applications. And if you got any questions about the whole application or anything specific related to image upload or capturing, as usual, just let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins, and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.